Tommy Bruin. You have 10 minutes, Deputy. Thanks, uh, Cahirla, and, uh, and uh, I appreciate uh, the chance to make a few brief remarks about the draft final report of the subcommittee uh, on Dáil Reform. First of all, I'd like to uh, warmly thank uh, the uh, Can Corla, uh, uh, Deputy Sean O'Farrell, uh, for uh, the work he has done, uh, along with all the members of the committee and indeed our staff, our, our uh, Dáil uh, Rochtas Commission staff, uh, in bringing forward uh, the report. And a particular thanks to, uh, also to uh, Deputy Thomas uh, Pringle. Um, uh, who represented uh, many independents um, on, on that committee. Uh, and the uh, Cancorl, of course, um, has held one-to-one um, uh, -one meetings with many deputies, including myself, um, in relation to uh, the, 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 the body of reforms uh, that are coming forward. So, in general terms, I, I want to, uh, to welcome uh, the, the general thrust of the uh, report before us. Um, uh, the uh, business committee, which is uh, um, being proposed, I think is a wel welcome advance whereby uh, the uh, oppositions and indeed government backbenchers uh, you know, would find out at a, a few hours' notice or a day's notice what was going to be the business of the House. So, knowing for, uh, definitively now for a couple of weeks forward uh, uh, and being able to have an input into that if, uh, when a business committee is established, I think will, will be uh, very valuable. Uh, and one of the key elements, I think, of the report, which says you know, about the monitoring of, uh, of legislation is also uh, very uh, important. You know, we think of bills, go here, look like the sale of alcohol bill uh, uh, going back over, I don't know, maybe a decade and a half, the, the noise bill going back over a decade and a half, the foreshore bill, again, they, they've all been sort of on the floor at different times in my time in this House and they haven't been implemented. So the idea of monitoring and implementing desirable legislation for the people uh, is very, very important. <coughs> um, uh, earlier, I think it was in the, uh, late in the last stall or early in this stall, I, I asked our Aroctus library staff uh, to prepare a report for myself uh, in relation to um, an estimates committee, uh, to have an estimates committee for uh, Dáil Éireann. Um, and um, it, it uh, focused, uh, uh, the, um, our colleagues in the library produced a very uh, fine report, uh, which focused on the, I suppose, the, the, the failure and, and carried on from the OECD 2015 report, which showed up uh, the grave deficiencies of this House in monitoring, uh, uh, you know, financial uh, legislation and measures. Um, and it showed, of course, that we follow the UK system, the um, um, ex ante uh, system, or rather the, the, the post hoc system in, in relation to budgets that we measure expenditure through the Public Accounts Committee, uh, which has done very fine work over the years. But we've never had, if you like, a sort of yeah, ex ante situation whereby a committee uh, would be, uh, if you like, looking at possible spending in this case for 2017. We've always had down through the years, uh, as the Coherlock might appreciate, we've had um, situations whereby uh, we discussed the estimates, say, for example, for, for 2016 uh, in the middle of um, uh, 2017 or in, in vice versa for 2013 in the middle of, of, of uh, 2014 in the middle of, of 2015 and so on. So we were always sort of a year behind um, in um, actually lo looking at estimates and we were talking about money that was already being spent. Uh, so uh, to get away from that, I think, would be important. Now, the Budget Oversight Committee, though, uh, that's been proposed, I, I would have some uh, reservations um, uh, about, it, uh, about its structure. Um, you know, we already have, we will have a Finance Committee, we'll have a Sectoral Committee in this area. And I think the proposal, one of the proposals from the OECD, which was reflected in the report uh, that um, uh, our Oireachtas uh, um, uh, library staff carried out, was that um, the, the an, an estimates or a budget oversight committee uh, would, would consist of uh, the Committee for Finance and Public Expenditure and Reform and the heads of the other committees. So it, it, was, it was sort of a different type of committee. To, it was going to have, if you like, a major input into what the structure of the budget would be uh, during the, the preparation of estimates in, in, in each summer or, or uh, each springtime, each summer, and then the, def, you know, the, the bringing together of the budgetary process uh, in September, October. Uh, whereas I'm not sure if this committee will actually do that uh, or whether, whether it will not in effect be um, going over again uh, the work of uh, the sectoral committees uh, in, you know, in, in this area. So uh, I, I would hope that um, it, it would be um, a, a break with the, with the past and that it would give a much more input, um, uh, you know, for example, uh, this year into the uh, budgetary programmes for 2017, 2018, uh, and however long this government may last. Uh, but, um, you know, it could be a situation that it doesn't really reflect the kind of uh, 
um, powerful budgetary committees you'd have in countries like the Czech Republic um, or Poland or Portugal or indeed in France, Germany, Austria, Italy, uh, where they've always had the, the non-Westminster tradition of, uh, if you like, invigilating uh, future spending plans of each department, and which, again, as I said, I hope this committee, uh, uh, when it comes forward, would, would actually do. Uh, the Independent Parliamentary Budget Office um, uh, obviously um, uh, could play a, a major role here, but there's a lot of emphasis laid on the uh, statutory underpinning of this office, and uh, I would feel that, uh, you know, that to, to make it what's said to be in the report, to make it an, an independent uh, uh, parliamentary uh, budget, uh, if you like, supervised or, or, or uh, office facility or whatever. Uh, um, again, going back, I mean, I, I would think that the Parliament itself uh, should have this role, uh, that the Parliament should have, uh, you know, the fundamental say in relation to the preparation of future budgets through the committee. Um, and I don't think, uh, I, don't, I don't know whether, in other words, this office which is suggested under the independent parliamentary budget, um, I, I would suggest that that role uh, would be proper as part of the, uh, the Budget Oversight Committee itself. Itself. It, would be a, it would be, if you like, um, a function of the, uh, the Budget Oversight Committee wh which would have if, uh, that fundamental independence. So, uh, again, I'm not sure how, the, how, that, how that would actually work or whether it could be another, if you like, instrument uh, for a government and for, if you like, powerful interests in society to say that uh, certain things cannot happen. Uh, we can't bring in, for example, a, a, a single-tier health system. We can't bring in uh, a proper childcare system. Uh, because um, you know it would be wrong to do it. We don't have the money and so on and so forth. So I, I would wonder about the independence of the the, the, the budget oversight uh, committee and uh, putting this independent parliamentary budget officer or whatever uh, beside it in some sort of a, a role that might impinge on the work of the committee. Um, the in relation to parliamentary legal advisor, like other deputies, I've used the services again of our. I think at the moment um, it's sort of a commissioned legal support. Uh, when we were preparing bills in opposition and so on. And uh, I, again, I would welcome that proposal. I think, I, I think it's valuable. Um, the, we've had some discussion earlier on. Uh, I want to agree with the previous deputy in relation to uh, leaders' uh, questions. Uh, it would seem incongruous that you'd have a number of leaders, for example, uh, for the Fianna Fáil party um, at leaders' questions uh, or asking leaders' questions. And uh, I, I mean, it seems to me to be copper fastening the idea that Fianna Fáil is both uh, which of course it is, and, and in opposition, that is trying to straddle, it'll be another device to try and help Fianna Fáil to straddle these two roles. I, I mean, I think each group, um, each party, um, it's fair enough to have uh, a, a, a slot at, at leaders' questions and, and to have a, leader, a leader's question uh, there. Just in relation to the new timetable, um, Ardal has often been criticised as being very un uh, family unfriendly and being very difficult for, uh, for families uh, because of the incredibly late hours. The last government, for example, was famous for having um, major debates going well after midnight uh, and, uh, you know, we, we've had huge issues. Uh, being discussed usually on a Tuesday night and running way, way late. And I just wonder again, even at this, this 10 o'clock, um, uh, if you like, time of, of having um, plenary business uh, up till 10 o'clock, starting possibly, you know, much earlier, whether or not we could even move to an earlier part of the day for committees like 7 or 8 a.m. And, uh, and be finished at an earlier time uh, and to give families, uh, to give us as members of families, to give, uh, to give us and our partners, uh, if you like, a chance to have a more normal style of life. The point about the Parliament, of course, the fact it's in Dublin, makes it much harder, obviously, in this regard for all of our members and I think uh, at some discussions people were saying that maybe we should take the Parliament outside of Dublin, uh, that there, w there might be merit in having uh, sessions, plenary sessions, in, obviously in Cork and Galway and Athlone and uh, our other great towns and cities. Um, and uh, obviously I think this chamber is due for refurbishment, Coherlock, and the Shannon Chamber, uh, which I would have liked to have seen permanently closed, uh, but it's also due for uh, some period of refurbishment. But there might be an opportunity to explore that as well. But I do think we we need more family-friendly uh, hour, working hours. Uh, so um, uh, the comments are made earlier on about the, pre the role of pre-legislative uh, process uh, are, are very valuable. Just a final point again about committees. Um, maybe there are too many committees, still 23 committees. Uh, I know some of them are, you know, won't be meeting that often, the thematic committees and so on, but um, it does seem to me again to a lot of committees uh, for, a small, for a reduced uh, doll. But uh, in general, I, I, I thank the uh, CAN and uh, 
um, again, uh, Deputy Pringle and others who worked so hard on this report. Um, and I think the general thrust of it will produce a more democratic, more transparent and accountable doll. Thanks, uh, Kerlock. Thanks, Deputy.